Hi, welcome once again on the course of business planning. We are learning how to prepare a good business plan. And this time we are practicing uh, like the selection or recruitment of people. Uh, why is it important in business planning? Uh, essentially, any experienced investor, any experienced investor who has already played the role of the so-called angel investor, will tell you that people are at the core of any business. Uh, this is why it is so important, for example, to learn how to pitch your business concept because people who are likely or who could potentially be your investors will first and most of all look at you as a person who presents a business concept. This is human. When one human being interacts with other human beings, everybody pays attention most of all to other human beings in the interaction. So people are the core of any business venture. And in this activity, I will try to lead you through basic distinctions that can help you to put those assumptions about people, about the team you would like to work with in the business plan. In the business plan, you normally don't put any uh, assumptions as for the exact procedures of, uh, uh, of let's say, recruitment. You can and you should put some assumptions as for the number of people to be employed in the business and as for the total payroll or so the, about the total amount of money to be paid in salaries to those people because this is important for your operational financials. Yet this should be like very gross assumptions just in order to know, for example, how many jobs can you create and still remain competitive or how many jobs can you maintain in the business and still remain profitable or to remain able to break even in your business. So this is uh, essentially about planning a strategy as regards other people in your business. So let's go to the matter of the subject. I go into the PowerPoint presentation Activity number six. Let's profile the people we want to work with. So the essential idea is to take a business concept. You can take something completely new, which you haven't gone through yet in the previous activities in this course. All, uh, or, or you can take something that you have already thoroughly worked through in the demonstration part, uh, which you will see further in this video, when I will be demonstrating my own strategy as for people in my business concept, you will see that I continue on uh, the same business concept I have already developed previously. So the idea of manufacturing uh, small turbines powered by wind or by water, small electric turbines the so-called small wind and small hydro turbines. Okay, so you take that business concept and uh, ask yourself a basic question. What kind of people would you like to work with? Mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning, you can have like a very loose brainstorming about the characteristics and the profiles of those people. Uh, there are like three main questions that I propose you to ask yourself. The first is about the kind of competences that you need from those people. It is about being honest with yourself. If I have the business idea ABC, how much of the required human know-how, of the required skills can I bring to the table? And how much of it is to be brought by people whom I can hire or, to co or whom I can convince to be my business partners? By the way, it is an important thing. I develop on this further frequently when you want to 
recruit for your business project someone really skillful someone who has like a really big position in the given market it might be more advisable to offer them partnership in business with you rather than a classical job anyway first question what kind of competences you need from those people secondly would you like like established experts with very sharp views on a given area of expertise or would you rather like like keen learners people who can quickly learn from a base that they already have without being experts uh, for example, if you go to big companies, you usually in big companies, you usually have a team of experts. But if you go to a startup, to like a freshly started business, most frequently you will rather encounter those quick learners. Experts are harder to come by in startup businesses. And finally, the last question, which is at the bottom of the slide, and which I will allow to magnify in the center of the screen because it is important. Uh, frequently, when we recruit people for a business project, we intuitively go towards our friends and our family. And only secondarily, we choose people from like more distant social relations. As I will show you in the following part of this video, I prefer on the whole to reach out to those more distant people. Uh, the scientific base for that distinction. Uh, so if I ask you, do you want them, so those people, to be your friends or do you prefer more distant and formal relations? It is based on a scientific distinction between the so-called immediate or close social environment that each of us has, on the one hand, and the distant social environment. The thing is that, according to all the science I know, our social relations with people in our immediate environment are very different from those with people in our distant social in environment. And it is just a question, which type of social connections do you feel better up to handle? Those like close, very emotional, immediate ones, or those more formal relations with people from the distant social environment? The next question let me okay the next question okay here is the icon but let's go over the icon the question of control when you recruit people to a fresh business project especially when you are starting up it is not just about them doing some work it is about them acquiring a certain degree of control over your business even if you don't explicitly phrase it so. I have that experience in the small businesses that I used to run. When I hired someone and I sort of liked the way that this person works, I tended to uh, trust them with more and more competences, with more and more decisions. And before I know, uh, I could see that this person had actually taken an important control over my business, for example, by taking control over important customer relations. So ask yourself from the very beginning, honestly, what kind of responsibility uh, would you like those people to take in the business that you are planning? So what those people should really be in charge of? And when I say in charge, it means that they have some work to do and they have some power over the way your business works. Now, next question. If total control over the business, excuse me, I made um, an orthograph mistake. Okay, in total, if, if total control over the business you want to start is 100%, what percentage of control would you like to share with each of these persons? 
And remember, all the individual participations summed up cannot go over 100%. It is a useful mental exercise. As I said, especially when you are a small businessman or a small businesswoman, and by small I mean the size of the business, of course not your physical size. If you, have, if you run a small, a small business, those first people you hire on the team will inevitably take control de facto or legally over some part of your business. And you'd better know in advance what percentage of control are you willing to give away. Now I will move to the other side of the window. Okay, maybe first I go a little bit smaller. So work, risk and rewards. Uh, it, now it is about working on the type of contract you would like to have with those people. First of all, do you see yourself employing those people and be their boss? So do you feel like a boss, essentially? Or would you rather see them as your business partners? By experience, I know that being a boss is very different from uh, being business partners with uh, someone. It changes a lot. Huh? If you feel that you have a strong proclivity to be an efficient leader, go for the boss position and go for employing those people. If you rather feel like operating with someone on a base of equality, or like strictly speaking teamwork without visible leadership, then you can go for uh, recruiting those people as your business partners, so like allowing them into the equity of your business. Ask yourself how do you see those people participating in risks and rewards inherent to your business. There is a principle. If you want a person you hired to participate in the risks you are exposed to in your business, you need to give them something in exchange of that risk. You need to give them something, some kind of incentive that will make them think, OK, it is worth taking those risks. Now, if you were them, if you were those people you recruit on your team, how much would you like to earn per year and what percentage of those proceeds would you be keen to submit to risk as a variable bonus? Now I go into my demo, so into the way I see my team with that business concept I am developing. I am not going to repeat all the details of the business concept I am demonstrating in those videos. You can go to previous activities in this course uh, to, to see it more in detail. Uh, once again, it is essentially a technological business, the idea of manufacturing small wind turbines and small hydroelectric turbines. And probably the business scheme is, is uh, supposed to go either towards vertical integration with operating power installations or towards horizontal integration uh, into manufacturing a larger range of goods besides the turbines are strictly spoken. And as I see, as I wonder about the people whom I would like to have, I have two categories. I have industrial engineers. Uh, I am honest with myself. I know that I need someone with technological competences, well-developed technological competences. And here I would like rather see experts. Keen learners, yes, but experts most of all. Uh, if you go uh, to uh, if you go to activity number two, business modeling in, in this uh, in this course, you will see a little bit of research on business patterns which I made uh, in that section. 
and essentially the market of small wind turbines and small and small hydroelectric turbines seems to be like pretty stable and pretty steady in its growth in such a market you need technological experts and besides industrial engineers i would like uh, business facilitators in the section devoted to risk assessment and planning i nailed down the fact that i need a well developed network of business contacts in order to figure out the right basket of technological assets i need so developing those business contacts will be crucial especially during the first two years so i will need that special category of people who are called the business facilitators those who like uh, make business deals happen the industrial engineers should be basically employees unless they bring some exceptional knowledge and skills to the table then they could be business partners as for business facilitators it is the opposite i would rather see them as uh, business partners or as freelance uh, employment is possible if they want to if they really are worth giving uh, them an employment contract further in this video i explain you that there is a mixed category uh, which is a sort of a stride engineers and business facilitators in technological businesses it is known as project managers or project leaders now as for my uh, social connections with uh, those people my experience of working with family and friends is on the whole negative i'm quite honest here i tried a few times it always was more or less of a disaster so i want to separate very clearly my work life from my private life so people whom i work with i want them to be like a good team i want to trust them i want them to trust me but i want to recruit them from my distant social environment I don't want to work with any with anyone from my family from among, or from among my close friends. Now about control. Uh, just as a reminder, I can remind you that already just let me shift to a different place on the screen. Uh, as a reminder, when I was doing that uh, or a demonstration for that activity which I call goal setting, I came progressively to the conclusion that in the development of that business, I want to acquire a large substantial amount of land. And when I was doing risk assessment and planning, I came to the conclusion uh, that the substantial amount of land could be a hedging asset in the business to balance the operational risks uh, connected to the strictly speaking manufacturing business and uh, i have a very different take of control on the control of the two types of assets i have in my business or i would have in my business so control over land is uh, something different for me from control over technological assets so those more strictly attached to manufacturing i am almost obsessive i am 100 percent honest here i am almost obsessive about controlling property rights to land uh, i want entire equity in the land that will be that uh, hedging asset of my business as regards technological assets i am much more flexible Essentially, I would like to stand to stay above five percent in the equity uh, in those specific assets, uh, just enough to be like a significant voter when shareholders vote in a business. But I can very easily give away most of control over equity to someone else. So as regards those technological assets, I am much more open to give away control. 
So you can see that in my case, when I started to think in the lines of how much control do I want to keep over that business, it immediately splits into those two avenues, land and technological assets. Maybe if you ask yourself the same question about your business concept, you will come to similarly interesting conclusions. Now, as for the question of risk and rewards, uh, there are some, let's say, common practices in business which it is hard to circumvent uh, in, uh, when you start a new business. So, engineers usually, especially those who are expected to be experts, work on long-run projects. And uh, I should be very careful about pressing them with, um, with some highly incentivizing financial bonus on results. Good engineering is consistent work over many months or even years. So classical employment contracts would be like the name of the game here. On the other hand, when we talk about business facilitators, they are a different category. I already said that I would see them as my business partners, but anyway, I would see for those business facilitators contracts uh, adapted to the fact that business facilitation is a success-based job. So there should be a substantial financial incentive, like a bonus based on results. And once again, I remind you that in technological business, there is a category of people who are astride those two categories. So astride engineering and business facilitation. I have at least one friend who uh, would work on such a job for many years. Huh? These are called project managers or project leaders. They put together business deals and they figure out and nail down the right basket of technological assets to use in those deals. Uh, it could be an interesting avenue of recruitment in my concept because when I was doing business modeling, once again I am referring you to that section on business modeling, I came to the conclusion that businesses like the one that I want to start frequently have a network structure. So instead of one big factory, one big concentrated business, there is rather a whole chain, a network of small local operations which sum up together. And my provisional conclusions. So just to show you what you can conclude uh, out of your thinking about the people you want to hire on your team in the business. I came here in my demonstration uh, with two essential conclusions. Aspect number one of my business structure is that I think I should acquire that land I want as hedging asset in my business. I should acquire it privately before it somehow enters into the balance sheet of the business, of the manufacturing technological business, strictly speaking. So I would like to acquire, to acquire the land before and then apport it, that's the legal term, uh, apport to the business structure some kind of lease-based rights, uh, so as to keep entire property rights to the land and just like put the land to utilize in the business, huh? but cautiously. And aspect number two of the business structure is I should create two essential teams, one engineering and another one focused on business development. And the whole running of the business should be like an interaction of those two teams. Okay, that would be all in that activity. Once again, we have been working on profiling people we want to work with in the business. I hope that you have seen through my own demonstration that uh, this line of thinking, whilst in the beginning could seem a little bit idealistic and a little bit abstract, can lead to very like down-to-earth 
practical conclusions as for the business structure you want to create. So, as usually, I uh, wish you to have fun with this specific practice, to have fun with science and to have fun with life. Bye.